I think the first time I rope soloed was in 2004 when I went to Yosemite for the first time with my friend Martin. So you've been rope soloing for almost 20 years. I guess and so, you're yeah. still alive. Yeah. <laughs> I recently learned how to rope solo from somebody who has been doing this forever. And it turns out to be a real game changer. Even when I don't have a belayer, I can still go out and work out the beta of a really hard route. And I can work on my aerobic endurance for hours, even when it's freezing and there's nobody crazy enough to join me. Gerke Hoekstra showed me his method for rope soloing, and in this video he will also show you. Now keep in mind, rope solo is quite dangerous, and you probably shouldn't be learning this stuff from a random YouTube video. That said, I think he explains it quite well, and I'll add some extra resources down there in the description as well. I use lead rope solo either to do a multi-pitch route or a big wall route just as an adventure alone, which I really like. But normally in sport climbing, I would use lead rope solo to, to bring up a rope and then uh, to top rope rope solo for training or for warm up. We will demonstrate the techniques on this climbing wall in Spanwoude. The artist who created this climbing wall used a mold from a crag in Belgium. As a result, Spanwoude is as close as you can get to climbing on real rock in Holland. For lead rope solo, the first thing to do is to build an anchor at the bottom. We're very lucky here because there are bolts at the bottom of the route. But otherwise you would have to build an anchor using trad gear. If you don't know how to do this, then enroll for a course. Kerke uses a figure of 8 on one bolt and a long alpine butterfly on the other. This way, if one of the bolts fail, then the amount of extension is minimal and the other bolt won't be shock loaded as much. After building the anchor, you need a system that will catch you if you fall, but also allows you to give yourself slack so you can climb up and clip. If you want to do rope solo, you should have a, a very good basic understanding of uh, rope management and, and safety awareness. The skills that you need is you have to be able to make a good uh, anchor. You have to be able to change from uh, ascending a rope to descending a rope. So that means if for example you would be on ascenders, on jumars or micro tractions and you are hanging free in space, you have to change from a, a ascending device to a descending device. Uh, you have to be able to change from uh, being at the top securing yourself and then descending so that's just regular uh, uh, rigging and abseiling all that without uh, the, the buddy check that you would normally do you have to have a system where you check yourself to make sure that that it's safe Gerke will demonstrate two systems his preferred system uses a Petzl Grigri an ASAP and a micro traction this works great but it's relatively expensive Later he will also demonstrate a cheaper system that only uses a Grigri and some knots as a backup. I've been using the first system and it's just been working great. The Grigri is the main device and it should lock during a fall. They're really good, but they can fail in certain situations, so you do need a backup. In this system we use the Grigri upside down, with the climber side of the rope going towards the anchor at the bottom and the Grigri pointed towards the climber. Use a cord to keep the Grigri oriented towards the climber. This makes it much more reliable in the case of a fall. You have to prevent the carabiner that attaches the Grigri to the belay loop from crossloading. A crossloaded carabiner can and will break. You must prevent the carabiner from crossloading. Gerke uses tape or rubber bands to keep the Grigri in place. I personally use a Mayon Rapide. These are made from steel and as a result they're strong in all directions, so I'm not so worried about crossloading. Sometimes the Grigri will slip, then all you need is a slight tug on the rope to activate the brake. But the Grigri can also fail completely. That's why we use the Petzl ASAP as a complete backup. In theory, as long as I climb up and down in a controlled manner, it should be fine. And if I fall, it should catch me. It's like having an extra brake hand. Moreover, we attach the ASAP with a quick draw and locking carabiners to the belay loop. So even in the case of a total failure of the Grigri, the Petzl ASAP will work as a backup and hopefully catch the climber. If I would fall, it would block. This is the braking rope. It has a little loop, so I can make the loop smaller or bigger to make sure that I can 
clip uh, conveniently and I manage it by just pulling on this rope. The weight, the, the weight of the rope is on here and this is the backup. So in case this will slip very fast, it would block and block the Grigri. In case this, in the unlikely event that this would all fail, the weak link would break and I would hang on the ASAP. One issue with the ASAP is that it uses teeth, which could damage the rope in the case of a really hard fall. However, these devices are rated for 4 kN at the minimum, and the channel hard is easy showed that even a hard lead climbing fall will result in a much lower force. So even though I wouldn't trust the ASAP all by itself, I'm perfectly fine using it as a backup. Finally, the micro traction. This is just there to make your life a little bit easier. The micro traction allows you to give yourself a certain amount of slack as you climb. The more slack, the easier it is to clip or climb. But don't give yourself too much slack, because if the Greek refills completely, then having lots of rope means the fall will be much bigger before the ASAP kicks in and catches you. The micro traction is also great for top rope rope soloing, so you'll get lots of value out of this device. Keep in mind, none of these devices are actually intended for rope solo, so use them at your own risk. Make sure you think ahead and bring the necessary gear to build an anchor at the top or clean the route. If you're in an overhang, also bring the necessary equipment to ascend the rope. You don't want to be stuck in mid-air while you're climbing all alone. Ascending the rope, cleaning a route, building a top rope and lowering down are basic skills that we won't cover in this video. Alright, it's almost time to start climbing. If you can, stick clip the first bolt so you can test out the system. Does the Grigri break if you sit down? And does the ASAP block if you yank the rope really hard? And of course, before you start climbing, double check that you brought all the necessary gear. Quick draws, personal tether, a way to build a top rope, a way to clean the route, and if you're in an overhang, also a way to ascend the rope. Because if you fall, you may not be able to reach the wall and you have to ascend up. All right, time to start climbing. Give yourself rope using the cash loop and climb up. Clip as normal. The Grigri shouldn't lock as you climb, but it should lock in the case you down climb and wait the system. If this doesn't work, then experiment with different thickness rope. This loop, uh, if I'm close to the ground, I keep it short because uh, I don't want a big fall distance uh, in the case this one would slip. So I keep a very short loop and I have to handle it quite often. The higher you get, the more weight is going to be on this rope. And therefore you want this loop to be a little bit bigger to compensate for this uh, weight because otherwise it will slip through immediately. If you would be very high and this weight would be very uh, there would be a lot of weight on this one, this rope. You could consider putting 
an extra nut in a quick draw if you have a stance with two hands or use an elastic band in the quick draw um, just to keep the rope in place and to keep the anchor uh, under tension. The ASAP is really nice as a backup and I love it because it also allows me to climb up and down and allows me to work on my endurance. However, they are quite expensive. So this is an alternative using nuts. This system uses a grig reed just like before. After that, attach one end of a sling to your belay loop using a locking carabiner and attach the other end to a weak link attached to your gear loop. Then add a couple of non-locking carabiners to the inside of your sling. Finally, put overhand knots in the rope and attach those to the non-locking carabiners. This way, if the grigri slips, the knot will jam in the device and stop your fall. And in the unlikely event your grigri will fail completely, the knots will still be there as a backup because they are attached to your belay loop through a sling. This solution doesn't require a micro traction either, and it's much cheaper. Just make sure that the first few knots are shorter than the later ones. This prevents a ground fall and also prevents the rope from tangling up. For top rope, Herke uses a micro traction and a jumar. He creates a fixed line by attaching the rope to the anchor at the top using knots. Make sure you weight the rope at the bottom. Again, just like with the Grigri, he uses a cord to keep the micro traction in place. This reduces the fall distance considerably. Herke uses a jumar as a backup. I personally use a Grigri. This way I won't forget to bring an extra device for lowering back down afterwards, because I can just use the Grigri. One downside though is that as you climb, you need to pull the slack through the system, because it doesn't feed automatically. Whatever gear you use, make sure there's enough space between the two devices so that they don't interfere with each other. There's loads of ways to top rope rope solo. Just make sure that you bring the gear so that you can always ascend or descend the rope. Oh, and always use a backup. We used to go to, for example, Frankenjura. We were having this family picnic uh, below the crack. And then I would do a rope solo, do a couple of laps. And then I would take over the baby from my wife. She would do a couple of laps in the rope solo. And then if we were lucky, he would go to sleep and we could both have a burn on our project. And then uh, he would be awake again and we would start doing family business again. Rope solo can be scary. If you have a fear of falling and just taking more falls doesn't seem to help, then watch this video next. It will teach you two valuable techniques to overcome your fear of falling.